I would like to briefly introduce the lecture HPC Zero, which is the short form for Software Fundamentals of High Performance Computing. The HPC Zero lecture is an elective compulsory course within the bachelor's program, specifically in the area of applied mathematics. In a nutshell, it's about learning to program and understanding how a computer operates. We will tackle both goals in a very practical manner by doing two things. Writing our own compiler, which is essentially just a program that translates a high-level language into machine code, and by also designing our own computer to execute that machine code. The reason we are offering this lecture is first and foremost because it's simply cool to write your own compiler and build your own computer from scratch. It's amazing to see how the way of thinking you develop in math helps you quickly get into a completely new field. So far, you've probably just used things like computers as a black box. Now we're looking into them and we not just talk about how they work, we build them ourselves. The second reason is our master's program offers more courses in high-performance computing. These courses focus on implementing numerical methods efficiently on modern complex hardware. To dive deeper into these fields, it really helps to understand the basics. How does a compiler work? How does a simple hardware architecture function? If you have a good grasp of these, you'll understand the concepts much more easily. But back to HPC Zero. Even though we're working with a simple hardware architecture and compiler, it's still an ambitious goal for just one semester. So how can we achieve it? Well, there are different approaches. One way is to go from the top down, similar to how natural sciences work. In science, we try to understand nature step by step, starting with simple experiments. In our case, the nature we want to explore is an existing computer and compiler. Our experiments are simple programs that we analyze to learn more about how the compiler and computer work. Then there's a more mathematical approach, one that follows an axiomatic method working from the bottom up. In this case, we don't start with set theory and propositional logic, but with something similar, logic gates. Based on these gates, we build more complex components to add and subtract individual bits and later entire numbers. We also create mechanisms to store numbers. Step by step, we build from the ground up. Over time, what we create starts to work more and more like a real computer. In fact, we will follow both approaches, alternating between them. After a few weeks, we will then meet somewhere in the middle, and from that point on, we can look at things from both perspectives, which will help us to deepen and refine our understanding. In the first lecture, we will start from the top. We will work with simple programs that use input and output, if statements, loops and functions. We will also learn how to use the terminal and the compiler. In the second lecture, we will start from the bottom. We will work with simple logic gates and OR and NOT gates. We will also explore how to use these gates to add individual bits. And so we continue alternating. In the top-down approach, we go deeper and deeper in the bottom-up approach, we build higher and higher, until, as mentioned, both approaches meet in the middle and interlock. One could argue that we are not really starting from the very bottom, since we are building everything on top of logic gates. But if you want to go even deeper, there are other courses for that. Our university has a clean room, and there are lab courses where you can fabricate your own transistors. And if you ask the engineers nicely, They might let you join, even if you're not studying electrical engineering or have already finished your degree. The next right thing to do would be to explore electrical circuits and how transistors can be used to build logic gates. From there, we use these logic gates to create things like adders, subtractors, and memory storages. In other words, actually building a computer step by step from the ground up using electronics. So in this lecture, we start directly with logic gates using a simulator. This allows us to focus on what's essential for us. But at the same time, we create circuits that can easily be built with real electronics. A first milestone will be building a device that allows numbers to be stored in so-called registers and perform calculations with them. This device can be controlled using a sequence of ones and zeros, essentially machine code. In total, it supports only four types of machine instructions. 
this must still be entered manually and executed manually. But even though this is a very simple device, it clearly shows how programming directly in machine code fundamentally works. A universally programmable computer needs more than just four types of machine instructions. But fortunately, not too many more. Otherwise, building such a device would be too complicated for us. We see a similar principle in mathematics, where powerful theories like analysis or linear algebra can be built from just a few axioms. Here, instead of axioms, we have machine instructions. With our computer, it will then be possible to first write the machine code of a program into memory and then execute it. During execution, instructions will be carried out automatically, one after the other, until the program finishes. So when we develop this computer and program it, we follow a very similar approach to mathematics. We start with something very simple and then build up layer by layer. In principle, this was already the overview for the bottom-up approach in this lecture. Another important topic in this bottom-up approach, by the way, will be assembly programming. It's basically the same as machine code, but much easier to work with. Our computer also won't just exist as hardware, but also in form of a virtual machine. This has one big advantage. We can look inside the computer while a program is running. This makes it much easier to understand the connection between hardware and software. In the top-down approach of this lecture, we use a high-level programming language. We start with a simple Hello World program along with if statements, loops, variables and functions. Very basic concepts. But since we also want to understand what the compiler does, we occasionally will look behind the scenes. For example, we'll examine the assembly code that the compiler generates and see how it changes when we use different optimization flags. Since we also work with these low-level details in parallel, we'll gradually develop a better understanding of how this tool works. Maybe you're thinking, writing a Hello World program? Sure, I can do that. If statements, loops, variables, and functions sounds manageable. But writing your own compiler? Hmm, I don't know about that. But actually, we will write a very simple compiler in the first week. We'll start with basic programs that handle input and output. Step by step, we will build a calculator, not one that directly computes expressions, but one that generates assembly code instead. This assembly code can then run on a simple computer to actually perform the calculations. So how a basic compiler works will become clear very quickly and in a very hands-on way. The rest of the semester is essentially about improving this compiler so it can handle more powerful programs. For that, it will make sense to explore concepts like dynamic data structures, things like lists and trees. So again, we start simple and learn how to build more and more complex software step by step. Maybe you've already done some programming and experienced firsthand how small coding errors can end up costing a lot of time, sometimes making the whole process quite frustrating. Of course, that would be a shame. That's exactly why we have chosen to use a flipped classroom approach for this lecture. For each topic, there will be learning videos. You can watch them at home and they'll include simple examples that you can try out on your own. But the exciting part, we will tackle together. For every topic, there's also a worksheet. You can work through this on your own if you like, but if you run into any problems, we will be there to help you. We will guide you through the whole process step by step if you want. That way, the time we spend together working on the worksheets will be enjoyable, a time where we come together to program and learn.